<laughs> He's our man, the Pelicans color analyst, Sirius XM NBA radio. I've been listening to him a lot on the radio. Fox Sports Radio NBA analyst, our man, Antonio Daniels. What's up, brother? What's happening? Chris Broussard, Rob Parker. How you guys doing? Man, you're great, man. You are the look, perfect guy because we have a topic we're talking about, and you've made the transition from player to broadcaster, uh, analyst, uh, and all that, and everybody's like, ripping on. Pat are you Bell. saying don't ask me about you Patrick know Beverly? You know, <laughs> and, no, we talked about it today. We yeah. Okay, it so today. go ahead. Okay, and 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 let's just say this. I. I, there's a place for everybody, but when you put a player who's still in the game, still has skin, I don't think you can get anything objective, and that's the problem. But go ahead. Let's hear you. I, I wasn't a fan of it. Yeah, I wasn't a fan of it. Um, the reason I wasn't a fan of it is because it was personal. And right. you can tell it was personal. Right. Because later on in that same exact show, Patrick Beverly said that anybody in the NBA would pay James Harden the max. We know that's not true. Right. We know that's not true. So what you're saying about someone that that you obviously dislike and they have history with Chris Paul is completely opposite than the tone that you took with someone that you have um, love for in James Harden. The reason I wasn't a fan of it is because of the way he went about it. Um, I feel like it is fair to critique Guy. That's our job. But there's also a professional way to go about doing it. And I know everybody's different. I know everybody's different. I just felt like Patrick Beverly used that platform to take a cheap shot at Chris Paul. That was a cheap shot. And for me, it was personal more than anything else. I wasn't a fan of it. And, Antonio, you're so right. Look, he has a right to speak his mind, right? And when I first saw him being critical of Chris, I didn't agree But I was like, you know what? Okay, if that's how he feels. But then when I saw him just totally saying Harden should get the max, super max, and no reasoning. All he could say is 22, 10, and 8, right? 22, 10, and 8. Those are his numbers. And that was when I said, hold up. So you're just being biased now. If if you really don't think Chris Paul's that good, say it. But you got to be objective all the way across the board, you know? I'm a... I'm going to tell you the one thing that I've learned as being a a former player turned analyst. There are certain things throughout the course of my career that I understand that stars go through that I can't relate to. And I I don't have a problem admitting that. I have no problem. On our SiriusXM station, on on our show, I will say all the time, listen, I've never been at that level. So there are certain things that I don't understand. So being a role player, like I was for 13 years, like Patrick Beverly is, You have to understand you're walking a fine line when you're comparing yourself to one of the greatest point guards of all time. Look, you don't get to this level without an ego. I get it. I get it. But you also don't want to have irrational confidence either. To say, like, if it's me, it's a foul, but because it's Chris Paul, it's not. Look, we understand that's the way the NBA has always worked. So don't act like that light just came on now. You know what I mean? (laughs) Right. So I, 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 I get it. I get it. I it, he lost me when he started calling names. When he started calling them Cone and all that kind no, of stuff, not, you can understand right. and and talk about the fact that Chris Paul is thirty seven years old. He's lost a step, and maybe he's not nearly as good defensively as he once was. I get that. There's a way to go about doing that in a more respectful manner, in my opinion. Here's the issue I have with former players, and I mean players like who first argued that reporters didn't have a right to criticize them, right? Because we didn't right. make the league. We weren't good enough. We don't – what do you know? You never played in the NBA, okay? And then mm-hmm. when you have Shaq and Charles Barkley. and Kenny and Kendrick Perkins, now they push back on those guys and they played in the league. So, so Antonio, it's like you just don't want to be criticized because at one point it was because we didn't play in the league, and now you're pushing back on those guys who played in the league. So which one is it? Right. See, my, my thing is I don't think it, it's – I think it's how it's said. And, and we've heard that for the majority of our lives. You can take this out of the sports realm and put it in the real life. We've always heard in any relationship it's not what you say, it's how you say it. 
and I don't think guys mind being criticized, but I think it's a way to go about doing it. And the thing that I see now, if you are a current player or a former player, if you want to get on that big, that big stage, take shots at guys. Take shots. Because we all know with reality TV, drama sales. Drama sales. Well, Every, I was just, saying, look at what, Antonio. What's the first question you guys asked me about Patrick Beverly? Yep. Right. I, I was saying earlier to Rob, I, I've seen the ratings for first take and get up, and they were through the roof because of Beverly. Right, because drama sells. You know, yep. if, if Patrick Beverly, if he goes on there and he's politically correct, and he says, well, you know what? They won't Paul invite him back. not have a good right. series. And everybody will be like, oh, well, you know what? Maybe one day was good enough for you. But if you're willing to go up there and <laughs> take <laughs> shots at him, you know, because the thing is, for me, I, I say, and, and maybe this is why I'll never be in that position, because the way I do my job is I'll never say something about another player I wouldn't mind being said about me. Plain and simple. That's the way I go about it. I'm not going to get up there. I'm not going to take cheap shot at guys. I'm not going to do that. I will be critical, but I will be fairly right. critical. But you know, right. I will be respectfully critical because Let me say that's a part of the job. Let me say this. I, 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 had a, I had an issue with Matt Barnes pushing back, saying, like, you know, ranking where he has, is as a player. Because he's not as on if, CP3's level. Yeah, that he's not on his level, so he can't really critique him or, or say anything. And then I'm like, okay, well, if that's the case, Matt Barnes – and that doesn't mean he didn't play and have a, a good career in the NBA, then who are you critiquing and who are you criticizing? Right. I don't think you need to be Michael Jordan Agreed. to be able to have Agreed. the right to criticize. You guys make Agreed. the league. You've played. Antonio, only 400 jobs. There's, th- there's 330 million people in this country. There are only 400 jobs. And if you make it to that level, I believe you have a voice and you can give your opinion. But also, criticism is something that comes along with the territory. Right. That comes along right. with the 400 jobs. Right. That's a part of it. But the thing is, you know, it's funny because anytime I say something on SiriusXM about somebody's team or somebody's player, the response is always, well, you know what, you're a role player. I know. Right. So what's that mean? Right. So, right. so that means basically what that saying is everybody out there that didn't make the NBA has no right to have an opinion on the NBA. Right. You know what I'm saying? So if right. that's the equivalent of shut up and dribble. Or if yep. you're a lawyer, don't call into the station giving me your opinion on what the coach should do. Or if you're a plumber, don't call into the, yep. the station giving me – nope, you go lay pipe. You go You right. go do a, a, a court case. You know what I mean? You're right. Like, we you're try right. and hold guys up to a certain I, – I hear about Kendrick Perkins all the time. Anytime Kendrick right. Perkins said something that people don't like – they respond to him with, well, you only average this and this and this. Right. And this. So what is – understand well, do what Do you have saying. to be an all-star, right. a Hall of Famer to be no, – you know, but, it don't make sense. But, but basically what that's doing, Rob, you just said it's 400 jobs and 33 million people in the world. So basically those 32 other million people right. don't have an opinion in because they never made it. And so, right. And some, but then, you know what I'm saying? Like, right. And then we could talk about the coaches – who never played? They didn't make the league either. Who Bill were Belichick. Great coaches, Bill right. Belichick might be one of the great. Well, he's among the great coaches ever. He didn't play one down in the NFL, not one. Right. Phil right. Jackson was a role player. That's Pat right. Riley I, was I'll a role player. I, I, I'll say this. I've said this forever. I honestly feel like the best coaches in the NBA. So I won't talk about the NFL. I'm not a seasoned or knowledge. Right. I won't right. talk about Major League Baseball. Not a seasoned or knowledge. I will talk about the NBA. I've always felt like the best coaches in the NBA were role players. You know why? Because right. they can relate to everybody up and down that bench. From yep. a starter to a six-man to a guy whose minutes aren't consistent, they can relate to everybody. You know, yep. look, at, look at the best coaches in today's NBA. Now, when you go through and you – look at the job that Ime Udoka's doing. You yep. know what I mean? Look at the job Willie that Green. Steve Kerr has done. Willie, Willie Green. Green. Yep. Right. But look at these guys because – there's a relational ability that they have. Like, if a guy hasn't played in five games as a role player, I've been there before. If I'm coming right. off the bench as a sixth man, I've been there before. If my minutes aren't guaranteed and I don't know if I'm a player or not, I've been there before. So I know how to keep those guys engaged because I can relate to them. It's different that, if you're a star player. No right. disrespect to them. That's our man, Antonio Daniels. Good stuff, Check him man. out on SiriusXM NBA Radio. Great stuff, man. We appreciate you. I uh, appreciate it, fellas. See you next week.